So let's jump into the first question, which says, good day. Uh, I would like to know how to attack open ports like port 22, which is SSH, port 23, Telnet, port 8080, 80, more like open ports generally. Thank you. I'll take the lead here and uh, give my intake sure. on this one first. Then I'll be looking forward to your answer, Alexis. So if you're doing penetration testing with permission for a company or for a client or for someone, and you're actually doing network penetration testing, um, to actually know how to attack these open ports, uh, I would actually first look into what services run on those ports. And that's actually a thing, uh, a, that's just a simple NMAP away. You could do a simple fingerprint with NMAP, a minus SV, NMAP minus SV would, uh, would give you uh, decent results, which you could cross check with uh, Nikto. And of course, um, if you dig Metasploit or Metasploit, uh, you could also try using Metasploit and other scanners to kind of like see whether or not uh, all of these uh, tools that you're using um, give the same results. And probably the most important thing would be to actually try to uh, fingerprint or try to get a manual uh, recon of these uh, services. SSH, for example, so port 22, from what I know, is like quite solid. It's usually not vulnerable unless uh, there's a very old version running on the server. Telnet could be could be an open box, so it could be a mixed bag, uh, and you could get a lot of surprises. I've seen like scenarios where um, uh, Telnet was actually uh, a very weak point in someone's uh, server. What else? There's like 20, 20, uh, 21, which is FTP, um, and in terms of FTP, it depends on what kind, what kind of uh, service you're actually running. There, there are quite a few uh, FTP servers with a lot of vulnerabilities. So you would be looking into that. Now, as for uh, web ports like 80, 443, 8080, uh, I would actually not only look for these and actually try to uh, fingerprint them, but I would also look for other ports because there are a lot of web apps and web servers that run on less common port numbers. So not only uh, 80443 and 8080, there are like dozens of other uh, ports that uh, run or host web servers. Um, and in this case, I would actually run an NMAP uh, with the minus P minus. So minus small cap P minus um, parameter or argument. And of course, probably a general uh, suggestion in this case of uh, how to attack like custom ports. Since we're talking about network penetration testing, I would be looking for, there are quite a few uh, good books and courses uh, on the topic. And one that, that comes right in, uh, at the top of my mind is like the Cyber Mentors is a network penetration testing course, which is all yeah. free on YouTube. And he actually, it's like 25 plus hours of uh, video um, himself actually doing uh, network penetration testing. So make sure to check that out. Fellas, check out my Python basics course to learn the fundamentals of Python you need in cybersecurity. There's a discount link in the description. Alexis, what do you think? Um, yeah, that, that, that was very comprehensive. I think... Um... Just reading the question, uh, it's more directed at just attacking ports in general. So I think the first thing you need to get a grasp of is the various protocols that exist and, uh, and the different ways you would interact with them. So, you know, um, let's, let's take an example of SSH. So, um, you know, SSH can be configured uh, or is uh, configured by default on port 22. Uh, however, th this really doesn't mean that it can it can be configured on another port. So that's you right. should, that, that's something you should also right. keep uh, you should you should also keep an eye on. Um, so I think that's very important. So understand the default ports for various services, and of course you have to keep your eye out for uh, for you know these same services being run on uh, on various other ports. So just as as Chris mentioned earlier, uh, ensure that you scan all the ports with Nmap. So uh, that is done by using the uh, 
the hyphen P or the minus P minus uh, parameter. Uh, and also ensure that you're scanning UDP ports uh, because I think that's, uh, that's extremely important, uh, you know, in regards to, to, to you know, completely scanning your, core, your, your, your host or your target. Um, now, when it comes down to a methodology regarding targeting ports, as I said, the first thing is to scan all ports and, you know, keep in mind the, uh, that services could be uh, configured on uh, different ports, not, not just their default port. Um, so let, let's just take an example. If you're able to identify that you have SSH running on port 22, uh, you can uh, you can start performing the service uh, version enumeration with Nmap as well using the SV command as Chris mentioned, and uh, again with the example of uh, SSH, there are there aren't any um, you know inherent vulnerabilities with SSH um, commonly, but uh, you you will come across them with some older versions. Um, the, the most uh, the most popular target uh, or uh, vector for attacking SSH is usually through brute forces. So. Uh, yeah, that's usually the, the only way you can go about it. Um, so uh, it, you can perform a search exploit for the version of uh, of the SSH service that is running on the uh, on on the host. Uh, if there aren't any inherent vulnerabilities, you can you can try uh, you know using default credentials. However, that's something that you know is is not really common, but that's one way of going about it. Um, in regards to web servers, uh, which was mentioned just briefly with port eighty, eighty, and eighty. Uh, I think just identifying the, uh, the the web server technology that's being used, uh, whether that may be Apache or Nginx, uh, that's very important because again, that can give you an idea of the inherent security vulnerabilities that you that this uh, this service might be facing. And uh, you can use various tools to identify uh, inherent vulnerabilities in the service like Nikto, um, which is great for that. And then you know brute force. Uh, uh, directory brute forcing is very, very useful as well. You can use tools like Derb or Derbuster for that. And uh, in regards to the web application itself, I think that's uh, out of scope of this question because you're now dealing with uh, an entirely new web app or a separate uh, entity. So that's what, what, what I think. I know that uh, back in the days, like maybe 15 years ago, there were these uh, scanners for for uh, roots, uh, for mm -hmm. SSH. Uh, uh, and they would actually run these uh, with a list of maybe 20 uh, usernames and probably 20 passwords. And you would get like dozens, you would scan entire classes of IPs and you would get like dozens of results. Uh, and some of these servers were even up for um, years. Yeah, and so in, 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 it's funny you mentioned that because uh, you, the similar thing you can do today is, is using Shodan, where you can actually find these servers out in the wild, of and may, many of them, you know, still use default credentials. You know, find various uh, CCTV cameras, uh, Microsoft servers. Uh, so it's very, very prevalent in them. So yeah, it's uh, it's 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 one of these things that you find uh, quite often. One of the best things of this uh, this year's uh, uh, Black Friday was mm -hmm. that Shodan had a really really good promotion. They yeah. uh, they they ran for like maybe it was it was their ten year anniversary or something like that. I don't know. Uh, and they had like uh, their entire thing for one dollar. Yeah, I and think it was lifetime subscription uh, for one dollar. Which yes, was in, really awesome. In fact, uh, I, I think they have also added last year, uh, but but that was to to do with the sale particularly. But I, I picked it up two times uh, for for separate accounts because I, th I think it's a fantastic resource to have. It really is. I haven't been using uh, Shodan too much uh, so far, but I want to actually get more into it. Uh, most especially in terms of bug bounties, since yeah. I started more about bounties i know that i know that a lot of people use it as a very good resource so definitely looking maybe maybe we'll discuss about shodan uh, more specifically in another video